Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today I have a, well, it's kind of humorous, but it is terrifying experience to share with you. Before we get into it, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and my merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. The links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. My merch is displayed directly under this video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeffrey Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, the links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe, click the like button, and please leave a comment. It really does help. And guys, it matters. And now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get on with today's upload, shall we? All right, guys, today I have a subscriber interview. Imagine going hunting with your son, getting a deer, and losing that deer, and almost losing your life. Let's get into today's interview. All right, everybody. So during my trip out to Rhode Island to go to the Conjuring House, I received a text from my buddy DJ, the channel's buddy DJ, boots on the ground. How are you, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Well, Thank you for uh, reaching out and checking on me while I was out there. Um, you had, you know, I, you and the missus had, you know, said praying for you, this and that. And then today you had sent a message to me saying something interesting happened. I got to share this with you. And, uh, it was, it was pretty interesting, um, to say the least, a little humorous, Quite. <laughs> but I think it was humorous because it wasn't happening to me. you or me. And, right. uh, so I'm going to kick the mic over to you and let you share this experience that happened. Okay. Um, Virginia has a youth day down here, Jeff, for kid for youth, you know, young people from 15 age and under who want to experience the outdoors and hunt for the first time and they have what they called a special youth day each set aside each year in the month of september where you can take anybody from 15 and under deer hunting where they can illegally harvest i think it's a bear and a deer or a turkey or just a deer well so it's just like just deer right and, okay i'm pretty sure it's just deer <clears throat> okay and um a friend of, like distant relative was up here hunting close by there on, on the farm and <clears throat> I heard some a few shots yesterday well I went up there and confronted the person and I told them there was no hunting well they come on out and they proceeded to go and ask uh, the relative of the house that well it's uh, my mother-in-law if they can hunt and she told him to go ahead well he'd already killed one and by the time he got done talking, he went back around 6.15, 6.30 to retrieve the deer that uh, his uh, kid had put down. Okay. Well, I was still outside throwing stuff over the leftovers from meals that evening over the fence for the varmints, and I heard a bunch of squealing, and then I heard a howl, okay. and it, it was a dog man. And all I heard was a bunch of hollering and screaming. And I heard door slamming and a vehicle coming down the gravel road, a flying, almost running over the hill. And he come up here and uh, almost run over the hill and I hit the brakes and come screaming to me, asking for help, saying something chased him out of the woods. And when I confronted him and asked him, he said a dog was trying to kill him. I said, there ain't no dogs up here that I see. I said, my dog's name. He said, no, this dog walked. I said, uh-huh. 
and he explained to me he was all excited and tore all the pieces couldn't hardly understand his words right and, and here's the thing is he's a bit he's a bit slow as well yeah you could say that right well he is i mean he just he's not he's a great fella but he's uh, right. he's got a little bit of a speech impediment and it's sometimes it's hard to understand him yep yep and no he's I'm got his to, he's got his kid with him who is how old 13 okay and he could between you know his disabilities and his excitement i couldn't have to understand him then i asked his son and his son said it was about six, six and a half to seven feet tall he guessed well when what was doing was he said that when he's out there he heard something around the top of the mountain run and he sounded sounded like a bulldozer and the kid never been in the woods very much i think it's like his second or third trip in his life so he started on his way back to the vehicle and left his father to get the deer and then there was around a bend and then all of a sudden when he's on his way to the truck he starts hearing the howl and his dad starts screaming and his dad just come out there running falling you know uh trying to get to him got all excited almost fell over the hill he fell down in a mud hole and hit his knee and then the animal come and chased him around the the uh, curve there in the logging road and it stopped when it seen his son and he said he got a good look at it he said it was about six and a half to seven and a half feet tall okay he said he sat there and stared at it and the next minute they turned their head and went to run toward the truck when they turned back around it was gone hmm. and he didn't get his deer so I, I guess to say that he's learned a valuable lesson and the aka dog man took his kill yeah yeah so <clears throat> just to clarify so the guy had taken his kid out for youth day the kid had bagged a deer now <clears throat> he didn't have permission at first came back no. to get permission <laughs> yeah no he didn't right goes back up looks for his deer they don't find it or did they find it oh they found it but they left it behind when right. uh when mr dogman got on his tail okay so did he take any shots at the at the dog man or no? There was, no. He take what any he shot. had done is uh, he had left the rifle in the truck. Mm. So they were just going back to retrieve then. Well, you know, to field dress it and drag it out to the vehicle so they could haul it home. Yeah. Well, I reckon they went back up there today about twelve o'clock and it was gone. Huh. Did the like kid? Will. Oh, I'm sorry. You're fine. Did the kid give you uh, like any uh, description of, or did he just say gray. The, the height? Gray. He said it was charcoal gray and black. Okay. Yeah. He said it looked like black. It, the best he explained, he said it looked like it was black, but it was turning. The tips of it were like gray. Mm -hmm. And he said, but the the he said what he could see the head, it was pure black. He said it was the blackest he ever seen. Wow. And I reckon, well, with it being gone, it, it's self-explanatory. You know, the, the animal took it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's, I don't, I'm not thinking it's funny because I don't want no competition up here with our animals. Right. Or hunting, but, you know, this person is sort of an outlaw. Yeah. They killed animals illegally in the past and probably still will if he had the chance. Yeah. And I think it's funny. You can only take so much from Mother Nature without you giving back before it takes back. A little mother karmatic justice. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of weird that the dog man stopped when it saw the kid. Yeah. You know, that's just like... Uh, and it was running bipedally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He said when he looked up and it come around the curve right there, it was on off to... And then they he helped his dad, and they run about another twenty feet to the truck. And they said when they opened the door and turned back and looked, it was gone. Gone. Wow. Not only that, his deer was gone too. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I could say about that, Mister Dogman got his prize. He'll eat well tonight. Yeah. That's yeah. enough meat, food to feed him for two or three days. Now, where this took place, um. We've talked about your property before a couple times on the show, and uh, you and I have um, looked at the property on Google Maps, so I've gotten a pretty good layout of the land. Was uh, where this occurred by the cemetery above you or by the strip mine somewhere in that area? Yes, yeah, correct. 
Okay. Yep. And you're thinking that it was the male. I think it was the male. Yeah, because you haven't seen that female or the. No, I have. I haven't seen her female. I've seen her or her pup in a long time. Since that, I think before. Before the rainstorm and the tornado right. and the floods, and then that guy had contacted me and saying that there was a dead female dog man with a pup next yep. to it. Yeah. So I haven't seen her around. Yeah, it sounds like it was that one then. Yeah, it sounds like it was like the male. Yeah. Because the male was, you know, sort of that color, what little I could see of as fast as I did. Because it scared the. How would you say the skis right off of me? Yeah. 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 That's crazy. I mean, you and I had gotten a good laugh about it because, you know, you had explained to me kind of who the guy is and this and that. And it was funny. Um, but like, oh, you and I, I yeah, Later. yeah. I mean, I know I got hurt. I mean, I didn't want him up there anyway. You know, I think it's funny. He took from the land, so the land took it back. And he's trying to explain to me, and I can't understand him. And the more harder he tried to explain, the funnier it got. I couldn't help, but I laughed at him in front of him. Yeah, he's getting worked up, you know. And yeah. like you said, he's got he's got a bit of a speech impediment, and you know, so he plus he's talking fast. I'm assuming because of the, the adrenaline dumping in. Exactly. Yeah. How was his kid acting though? Was he real quiet and wholesome? I think he is actually scared. Honestly, the way the kid was, he looked like he was in the early stages of shock. Shock, to be honest yeah. With you. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. If he had a, him. like any color, you know, no color or, you know, just. Oh, he was, the, he was as white as a sheet. I mean, he was really white. The, the kid was. Yeah, yeah. He that's, was really, really tore up. It, it really sucks, though, because, you know, um,. I hope it didn't ruin him. I hope it didn't want, you know, keep him from ever going back to the woods. That's what I was going to say is, you know, that's his first, you know, hunt. And uh, he's got to meet this creature, especially, you know, two or three times in the woods prior to this, you know. Well, and to then, be honest with you, Jeff, I think he was using his son as a pawn. Yeah, yeah. He was taking the son along and he was shooting the deer. But if anybody come around, he'd claim that the kid did. Yeah, yeah. He's that type of mentality. I don't agree with it. No. I just, number one, it's illegal. Number two, it makes honest sportsmen like, you know, me and others look unlawful and just bloodthirsty. And it's harder to compete against people that poach and use the law to their own benefit. And it's und- it's wrong to others. And I'm just glad he got a taste of his own myth. Absolutely. Absolutely. A little bit of Mother Nature uh, and karma coming exactly. back to bite you in the butt you know no pun intended but well nobody got hurt that's a good thing about it but i think it's hilarious it'll teach him a lesson and also i figure the dog man had his right hey you coming up in there he don't the dog men are journeymen and they're nomads they don't know boundaries they don't know property they yeah. just know that the native their native lands is in the woods yeah yeah exactly so, He's seen an easy way to get a quick meal, and I don't blame me. I would have done the same thing if I was in his shoes. Right, yeah. Or his uh, feet, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's it's a very interesting, the thing that gets me with this whole experience is, you know, yes, there was some bad stuff going on, but... The, the karmatic justice, but the, the thing that's making me question the whole kind of, uh, uh, encounter is that, the, that it stopped when it saw the kid. You yeah. Know? It's that's the boy. just strange. It just, you, you don't hear that. You don't hear no. that too often. Um, not all of them are bad. Right. You know, and I'm curious, maybe, uh, geez, and I hate saying this, but, you know, we've talked about that female and the, the pup and this male, and, you know, he's obviously hungry. I mean, you've had it out with him that one time, and you believe that you'd, you'd shot at him, and you did think he connected. 
So he's probably got a wound. Um, so it's an easy, there's an easy meal for him, right? But let's say, the way I look at it. yeah, let's say this female that's missing and the pup were the ones that were spotted down the way from you that were right. dead. He, maybe that's why he stopped is because he saw some, you know, a smaller and kind of put, put that, uh, that kid, you know, in, in, in perspective, maybe like, wow, you know, I'm missing. We don't know. You know, we, we think of them as non, and a lot of times people don't realize that they are intelligent. They have intelligence. They're not dumb. No, they're highly intelligent. Yeah. They They can understand our speech. Pack animals. Um, you know, so maybe he, he's missing his, his little family pack, whatever you want to call it, you know, and maybe that's another reason why he was looking in your house. Maybe he was looking for her in the, in the pup, you know, uh, heartbroken, you know, I mean, I hate, I hate sounding like, uh, you know, because that kind of sounds stupid. You know, like, oh, he's heartbroken. But, you know, who knows? We don't they know have, how these a, things are. We, I mean, we you can make you can make a theory, but we exactly. don't know. We don't know anything about no. them. You can say, well, yeah, this, that, but that's the best part about it is, you know, you can put theory to theory and, you know, maybe he is missing his little family. And exactly. uh, that would explain a lot of his, this male dog man, and his um, behaviors around your home, like looking through your windows. Um, I mean, he's really uh, not aggressive. Not that I'm. No. Not I mean, you only shot him because you had startled him, or you and had I gotten don't even startled. Know if that was the same. Yeah, and I don't even know if that was the one that was out here. Yeah. So it could. This could be a. To- that could have been a totally different entity. I don't know. I think but it's. I, I think it's awesome though that the. <laughs> I just like having them around, and yeah. especially if I know if with, you know, people that don't show mother, don't show Mother Earth and Mother Nature the respect due her. Yeah, and that's the way he got his payback. Yeah, absolutely. It's I a bet very, you next time, huh? I bet you next time if he tries to go hunt, he'll probably try to take a dag on a bazooka or a fifty cal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he can get a bazooka, but anyway. Um, you know, does he even have a 50 cal? And if he does, you know, do you think he'd honestly take a shot at it? I don't know, but he's also to the point that his disabilities, you know, as well as I do. Well, the way you told me this guy actually is not, you know, he, he's, he gets hyper when he sees a deer, he shoots. Yeah. And he don't pay attention. And honestly, with his disabilities, there's, you know, there's laws on the books in every state pertaining to people with mental disabilities. Yeah. And some people, depending on the, le- the severity of it, cannot legally own, purchase, or have firearms. And if I bet you if I checked it out enough, he is legally not able to own, possess, or purchase a firearm. Yeah, because very he's, true. And I, that might be the reason he hunts up here, because he can't go nowhere else to hunt where nobody knows him. They might, you know, turn him in. If that's the case, then I don't want him up here trying to shoot down here at us. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, there's a lot that, you know, that this kind of experience, this dogman encounter actually was a, a kind of a, a godsend, if you think about it, for you. Because yeah. the way you explained this character, he is off his rocker. You know, he'll, he'll, he doesn't know how to stop shooting. He said, you know, when he, he chased a deer, what, through a family yard and stuff like that. And yeah, he chased a a deer out of season through the family. Well, it was his distant family's property shooting at with a daggone two houses in between. Yeah. You know, and you don't need him coming at your house, you know, towards your house hunting. It's obvious that he doesn't respect firearms. So maybe this this would be the uh, the wake up call that a person like him needs and deserves. I would hope so, because if something were to happen, and you know, 
I'm like any other honest American blooded human. If you shoot at me or my family and you don't kill or hurt one of us, well, I'll shoot but, back. Yeah. Yeah. You can't say that though. No. But um yeah, that's it's 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 funny, a very funny uh <laughs> experience and I'm glad that well, you shared it with me because to put a to put a cherry in a coke or a strawberry on a uh, banana split, uh, he had lost control of his bodily functions. Yeah, and that was one of the better. That was one of the better, you know, things that could have happened. I think it was so funny because he had took his blaze orange off and tied around the front, so he had uh, urinated himself. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and that's just, you know, that's just icing on the cake for me. Yep. Yep. I feel bad for the kid, though. And like you said, you hope it doesn't ruin his uh, his perspective on going outside. You know, it's it's uh, that's a hard well, one to, you know, see yeah. at that young of an age. Have your dad getting chased. Chased. Yeah. And, you know see him you know urinate himself i mean that's 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 really scarring for a kid and well hopefully with any logic if he did what i thought he did the father using the child as a pawn so he could yeah. kill him yeah he feel he'll see the levity of it of the situation and maybe he'll learn a lifelong lesson being dishonest don't get you nowhere right right yeah yeah, definitely an interesting, funny uh, yeah. encounter. You know, it's, and we look at it, you and I are looking at it as, uh, you know, it's karmatic justice or, you know, this, this, and that. But really, all it was was that dog man was an opportunistic uh, hunter oh, no. at that point and, yeah. you know, took advantage of an opportunity and, uh, you know, made out with a made out with a meal. So I don't. I mean, if I were one and I had the smarts that they do, being limited opportunity to eat like that. Yeah. You know, to a human, I'd be like you know a butcher and truck taking brand new beef beef from straight from the butcher house to a restaurant and the tractor trailer wrecking, and we come along a few minutes later and pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Same scenario. And he sounds like, well, to let the people listening know, everybody remembers the Warner Brothers cartoons. He was a mixture of the way he talked of Elma Fudd and Daffy Duke. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do an impression yeah, of him, but yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's a good patrons of your channel want to know. That's what he sounds like. Yeah. Now imagine that times two being excited and tore out a frame and chased by a dog man. Yeah, complete adrenaline dump and uh, having a speech impediment. Yeah, on top of it. Is, is definitely. It's a trip. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, I appreciate you uh, sharing a, a humorous experience uh, with us. It's not very often that we get kind of a funny one, but um, I mean, it's My really pleasure. not. It's not funny. It is and it isn't. It's entertaining. It, it, it well, it, it is and it isn't because you know it didn't happen to us. If it was, no. If it was vice versa, it wouldn't be. But because who the person is and what he was doing, that makes it funny. And yes, it um, I'm just glad that I'm glad that he and the kid got out of there. Oh um, no. You know, but maybe this will be. Uh, like you said, a life lesson for both of them. So, I hope so. You're DJ, never too old to learn. DJ, I uh, I really uh, I I really wish I was there so I could have seen that. That would have been oh, amazing. So, I'll tell you, this, it was one heck of a twit. I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> awesome. Well, brother, it was good uh, talking to you, and thank you for you know putting a little ray of sunshine in my day. So, my pleasure, Jeff. Anything that I can do to get the truth out there to your patrons, I mean, that just goes to show not all of them are evil. Yeah, yeah. It's just they're hunters, you know. I mean, they're... I think, he's seen opportunity. He's seen a meal. Yeah. He took it. Simple as that. Yep. 
Yep, exactly. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was none the wiser. Yep. Ho- hopefully that he'll learn a lesson from that. I'm hoping his young one will learn the right lesson. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Don't be dishonest. Well, buddy, don't hang up. I want to talk to you for a few minutes after. It All was right, good buddy. having you on. And uh, thank you for, for uh, sharing that with us. Anytime, Jeff. I'm just glad that you're back safe and sound with us. Me too. Have a good night. And I'll, uh, I'll talk to you in a second here. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. You know, it definitely is a very terrifying experience, but the way DJ explained everything to me made it that much funnier. Um, the guy is just kind of your typical goony goo goo. I don't even know what else to say about it, but. You know, he brings his kid out as like the uh, kind of scapegoat in case they get in trouble. Well, I just brought my boy with me. He was the one that. And then this creature snags the deer. Um, Unfortunately, you know, the kid had to witness his dad getting chased by one of these things. But the most interesting thing is why it stopped. It just stopped when it saw him. And uh, that's that's pretty curious for me. But I wasn't there. And I am no expert on dogmen behavior. I don't really think anyone is, to be honest with you. That's just my thought. But uh, with that, I want to thank everybody for your support. I truly appreciate it. And may the great spirit watch over us all. May he guide us down that path that we call life.